Hello and welcome to Infinity. I'm Charlie Serafin and we're going to be talking about Chinese medicine this time. It's a return visit for our guest. He's Dr. Stephen Chang, an acupuncturist and herbologist. Dr. Chang is a direct descendant of a long line of Chinese physicians. His great-grandfather, in fact, was physician to the Empress of China. He's lectured all over the world and is the author of The Complete Book of Acupuncture and The Book of Internal Exercises, which is used as a text at Columbia University School of Medicine. Dr. Chang, welcome back to Infinity. For the benefit of those people who didn't hear you on our first Infinity broadcast, what is the basis of Chinese medicine? Chinese medicine, actually, uh, we can say the simple word is a preventive medicine. Maybe we, can, we don't say that's a medicine, just a preventive method. And how do you go about, what are some of the aspects of preventative, uh, the pre preventative approach that the Chinese Number use? one is diet. Number two is proper exercise. The exercise is not the idea like we said sports or some. It's something designed especially strengthen the internal organs. Then number three, uh, have to be very, very careful about the sex life, the right way to do it. And then the, the mental stage, like uh, wisdom, and how to think things, how to view the viewpoint. It's very important. Like a very po uh, try to encourage people, like positive thinking, and the forgiveness, and you have all the way to forgive. Not so easy as so you go ahead forgive everything. When the thing happened to you, you have to know how to forgive, and so on. So make it lifestyle very easy, unstressful, uh, and nut good nutrition, good exercise. Let's go through some of those points individually if we can and, and start with diet. Mm -hmm. When you say good diet, that would mean different things to different people. In some parts of the world, it would mean a high intake of a certain type of fruit or vegetable or perhaps a meat product. And in other parts of the world, it would mean something very different. Is there, since we're speaking primarily to an audience here in North America and mm -hmm. in California, could, we, could you give us some tips on diet for the Californian who's listening. That yeah, from my experience, I deal with so many Americans as uh, about uh, 16 years right here. I think in this country, the um, high, the greasy, high fat diet is a big killer. It's not only this, uh, this animal fats or we call saturated fat. Uh, So-called saturated fat, uh, it means the oil under room temperature is in a solid form such as butter, uh, margarine, animal fats, vegetable shortening, and uh, mm, coconut oil, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the too much this kind of di uh, fattening, uh, fattening diet. So this kind of fat goes into the body and it wrap all the cells because they don't have any place to go. Usually I try to tell people, say, you go home and mail a cube of uh, uh, butter and uh, rub into your face and uh, hair, and they try to wash off it. I can bet you wash four times with the detergent and hot water, you still feel something stick there, you can smell it. And uh, if that thing you put into inside your body, we cannot rinse them with uh, uh, hot water, our body only 38 degree, and we cannot uh, uh, put the detergent directly into it then where do they go? They just keep coming, keep coming. There's no place to go. It's packed into liver or pancreas or even ladies' uh, breast and the men's prostate, all these soft tissue organs. And they stuck there and block the function. If the, uh, the fattening uh, things get into, the, uh, get into the body and wrap the tissue, if they choke the, uh, the, the cell to death, we just add a bunch of dead cells. That's no big deal. But the problem is they wrap the cell, they choke the cell, the cell try to fight back, turn to be something like a, a normal cells, which we call cancer. So it is a very, very uh, important thing. Well, let's talk about it from a preventative standpoint mm -hmm. then. Let's talk to the individual who has been eating a high-fat diet that eats uh, a half a stick of butter on a piece of bread mm -hmm. and uh, loves french fries and uh, fried chicken and a lot of fried foods and, and takes in a lot of uh, fatty maybe I understand chocolate has some kinds of chocolate have a high fat content too they've been eating the wrong things they want to turn it around right now and they want to really have a better diet 
One, will it do any good or is it too late? And secondly, what kinds of foods can counterbalance that intake that they've already got? If they swear off butter from this Infinity program on, uh, what sorts of things might they eat? Never been too late. The body always renew themselves every moment. Only thing we have to do is don't let the body get hurt. So if we stop to eat that kind of fat, uh, like saturated fat, we still can use unsaturated fat, which means the, uh, the oil and the room temperature is, is uh, liquid form. So we can use salad oil. We can even, if you want to put something on a piece of bread, you can uh, put the, chop some garlic, a little salt, and uh, heat up the uh, corn oil or s uh, soybean oil. And then you put on the, uh, uh, the bread that's garlic bread. It's nothing wrong to eat that. Our body definitely needs some oil. Mm -hmm. And only thing is to stay away from the heavy butter or margarine. The margarine has too much shortening inside. And sometimes they're just a piece of plastic, too artificial. Mm -hmm. um, never been too late. Our body is going to clean them out. If we keep adding into it, like the, the blood vessels, keep pat on uh, those, uh, those greasy things. Uh, then you, the, the uh, blood vessels clogged up and the hardening, and of course get heart disease. That's the number one killer in this country. Mm -hmm. Joe Carcioni, the green grocer, is a, yes. a very a famous man. He's also a very healthy individual yes. and uh, has lived a long, happy, productive life. He says that the biggest problem with American diet is that we don't eat enough fresh fruits and vegetables. That's correct. If we eat a lot of fiber, for example, like in Chinese dishes, you, you go to Chinese restaurant, every dish is almost, they put some bamboo shoot inside. The bamboo shoot is no, absolutely no nutritional value just a very smooth uh, kind of uh, fiber. They just put into the body and fill up the room, like in in large intestine, like a sausage. You have to fill them up. You cannot just eat something really soft, and very nutritious, but uh, you don't fill up the room. They got trouble, they become pockets, and uh, you cannot move anymore. So like uh, carrots is very good fiber, and uh, of course uh, uh, the fruits, we don't just go ahead and squeeze the juice and drink it. We have to eat the, everything, the, the, the bulk, even the little skin. And uh, like uh, other uh, vegetables, especially the heavy type of green vegetables, they have a heavy tissues. For example, like we uh, chew the celery. We, can, we, we found a lot of things in there. We, we can, sometimes we have to throw them out because we cannot really uh, chew them uh, well enough. But we should swallow it because our intestines need them. And also all of these things can wash a lot dirty, a lot of grease things off before the body absorb it. Okay. We talked a little bit about diet. The next uh, point that you made was exercise. Mm -hmm. When we think of exercise, we think of doing 50 sit-ups and 50 push-ups and going out and uh, running a mile. That's not the kind of exercise necessarily that you're talking about. That's not the exercise I'm talking about. I'm talking about called internal exercise. Internal exercise means we special design certain pose, certain movement, maybe use the, t uh, the, the, the outside movement, like the regular exercise, maybe use breathing, maybe use thinking to, to push the tissues working uh, internal, uh, inside the body to encourage them uh, do the right thing, balance up just like the clock. Every organ should exercise uh, exactly uh, like they should be. So then we'll be perfect balance, the perfect health. How important are the muscles to the overall health of the individual? Again, the, the emphasis in traditional Western exercises, at least the ones that I'm aware of from physical education class, is built on uh, building up muscle tissue and building up stamina and strength. You talked about exercising for internal organs. We don't normally think about exercising our liver or our pancreas or uh, our kidneys that's or something correct. like that. So that's what th this big difference. The, um, the Western uh, exercise, I think there's a tradition or a um, history like Olympic. The Olympic uh, way, like a contest, contesting. So no matter what, you play ball, you swim, everything you, you're you have a little contest and build up the tension and the stress. 
And uh, the uh, tension and stress is the enemy of the body. Uh, actually, it's the cancer agent, whatever, is, uh, is not good for longevity. But uh, to build up the body to hold more, can handle more stress, the, the sports is great. But for longevity, for, from that viewpoint, it's not good. Because afterward, for example, you swim uh, one hour, afterward you're exhausted. Exhausted means you are uh, uh, output too much energy. And the body, just like a battery, if the battery keep empty up, we don't get enough chance to recharge. One day, the battery will be dead. So the uh, Chinese medicine consider our body is a battery. If we keep uh, use it, we don't charge them back enough. That's a big disaster. That's the disease come from. So uh, that's why the uh, external muscles, beauty or fitness, that's what the, the, the Westerner uh, paid more attention on that. But the, uh, for the longevity purpose, we should pay more attention on the internal organ, how they work. If we, in other words, if we chop off our uh, one arm or one leg, we still can survive 90 years. But if you chop off the heart or liver, there's no chance to, to survive. So compare that uh, aspect. So the internal should pay more attention. I think the next thing that you mentioned in, in your list, and I don't know how to paraphrase it exactly, was something to do with the spirit or your state of mind, a, a more of a, a spiritual aspect, thinking the right way, I think you said. Uh, are there some specific practices that can aid in that uh, preventative medicine, the Chinese approach, meditation, for example? Is that a, a positive yes, step? Yes, meditation, like uh, we talk about internal exercise, actually involved with meditation. There's a one principle to do internal exercise is whenever you do one movement, your mind has to be there with you. You cannot like a jog on the street, you put your uh, uh, little earphone and listen to some kind of music or thinking about the, uh, y y your fa uh, fantasy something. But the uh, internal exercise, when you do it, you have to be there. You, you have to concentrate. If I move my hand in front of me, so my mind have to concentrate this movement. So in other words, my mind and my body should be unified together because the separation, the mind and the body will be death. That's the death principle. If the unification, that's the life principle. So the thinking could move could, could, if uh, we have a certain, um, for example, if we suddenly uh, people say something, w upset us, we, we become very uh, tensed up and our heart beat up uh, uh, very fast and our um, face become very red mm -hmm. and because of the, the blood rushed into the head and the, the blood pressure could be very, very high. So a little bit of thinking, just, just being touched by some case, uh, incident, we could, uh, in, uh, the, the internal uh, situation completely change. So this is very, very important. It's like always keep a clean mind and uh, very calm, if we could. And that's, a, that's why a lot of technique to train, that's called exercise, to train ourselves to have, to handle the thing calmly and, uh, and uh, nicely and don't affect uh, the, the internal balance. Could you give us a breathing exercise? I'm sure that breathing is a critical part of, of well-being. Could you give us some little example that we might share at this time for people listening on a, the proper way to breathe or a simple breathing exercise? I think the sim very uh, uh, basic principle, we talk about the principle, the breathing should be very, very slow according to the uh, internal exercises viewpoint. If we do the breathing like a <sighs> like that, so we speed up the heart beating, and also the lung doesn't have enough chance to exchange the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, and uh, the, the good air and the bad air doesn't have enough chance to, to, to be exchanged. So the important thing is if we can uh, breathe very, very slow, as, as slow as 
possible, then we can slow down the heartbeat. We can slow down uh, the uh, uh, and get rid of the tension, and also let the lung cells have enough time to exchange the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, and to clean up the blood. So that's why the uh, the internal exercise suggests if we can train ourselves to breathe this way, put a little hair like like a feather uh, from bird or a chicken or something, put put in front of the nose. If we exhale, inhale, and so slow and so gentle, the the hair or the feather doesn't affect. Never been blown or or moved. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the the best way to breathe. So when you breathe like that, so you have to be there. You cannot think about something else or something excited, and you have to be just concentrated the breathing. So when you exhale, my mind is exhale. Always concentrate exhale, exhaling and in inhaling. So our mind cannot go away. If it go away, it cannot com accomplish this kind of exercise or this kind of breathing. So basically, just try not to rush. It's a silent type. Another point that you made early on was sex, and you touched on it the last time that uh, we talked, and you said that it's a critical part of, of well-being. Maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Yes, because the uh, uh, frankly, if uh, our f parents didn't make love, we didn't have the first cell on our my body, let's say. So the sex is the, the, the life, is original, or the uh, starting point of, of life. So actually every cell is is reproducing themselves and one cell become two. So that's another sexual activity, if the broad meaning. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why the whole life you cannot uh, exclude the, the sexual principle. So when we grow up, we have this awareness. We know uh, we have the sexual desire and the sexual uh, mm, pleasure uh, if, if we experience. So easily we, we abuse it. When we abuse, then we we use too much energy. For example, like uh, um, male, so like semen. Semen uh, in the in uh, y thousands of years, the, the Chinese uh, called Taoists, the, the, these people, they want to uh, 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 um, research and find out what's exactly in the semen. Of course, they found the sperm, and the, beside the sperm is the, f uh, the fluid. Uh, the nutritional value is very, very um, high. Uh, of course, the ancient time, they don't use that kind of term like uh, we do. Now we in, in in the laboratory we test one ejaculation uh, that amount like a one tablespoon of uh, semen the fluid is a concentrated uh, nutritional fluid the the uh, nutritional value uh, the, I mean high protein or uh, vi vitamins and uh, amino acid the minerals equal two piece of New York steak. And uh, ten eggs, six oranges, two lemon. That much uh, nutritional value inside is concentrated. And if we keep using it, keep keep uh, ejaculating, keep ejacul uh, of course we just lose them, and we lose the nutritional value that's only material part. And the sperm, they are million millions like little fish. They are life. For example, if uh, if uh, we do have a million eggs available, the one ejaculation I might have uh, a million sons or daughters, all got my eyes, my hair, my attitude, my personality. So that myself, that's a little seed. So all my life. So every time if we abuse it, and uh, of course we lose too much. Also energy afterward, we ha we are exhausted. We feel tired. And that all this uh, deplete the body. It deplete the body, deplete the function, especially deplete, uh, deplete the uh, immune system. And it just 
finally the immune system just couldn't handle anymore so and it's so low that's why i think now the aids uh, so popular because those people get aids are um, proved that they are very sexually uh, sexually very very active person that's why they they got this of course the aids has a, a lot of reasons too this is a one basic reason so of course for longevity purpose we we should know how to save how to reserve uh, don't abuse don't don't waste it so one time I was invited uh, to lecture at the uh, University of Oregon and the local newspaper come to took my picture the other day uh, the next day they have a headline <laughs> says Doc Chen says save your semen is big <laughs> my picture <laughs> on that <laughs> and uh, that's why I've been preach so if you want to be young so you, you really have to save your life fluid in other words what so about for the woman how does the woman accomplish okay, that? okay woman is the um, uh, okay the semen is converted by the blood so the Indian people uh, always like to say um, eight drops of uh, blood convert to one drop of semen and the woman doesn't have the semen like a man has uh, because they don't have prostate gland to, to concentrate to convert them but the woman's menstruation every month and uh, for no purpose just lose that amount of blood and that's just a, a big shame so the internal exercise part try to teach women to do certain exercise called deer exercise they could use uh, they could somebody even in three weeks they do the exercise they sub stop their menstruation uh, purposely if they stop to do the exercise the menstruation come back again if they started to do that keep doing they never lose one drop of blood so that's why I keep them health and young youthful are you suggesting then that for the man that sex should be an act of procreation only uh, of course, the sex is another thing. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. You cannot say forbidden. The, the, the Taoism, like Chinese uh, 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 philosophy, never forbid, like uh, uh, encourage people celibacy and so on, because that's a part of a body. We have to exercise properly. If we always uh, doing something like like we cast one arm, we say this poor arm. Uh, we we supposed not use it and let them ca been cast three months later atrophy so the body the same thing the prostate gland the penis or whatever is a part of the body is part of the circulation we need to have proper exercise so never encourage people celibate but on the other hand you supposed not to overuse it to hurt them so there is one uh, principle there's a formula this is the age times point two equals the date. For example, for men, uh, how many days allowed you have one ejaculation to orgasm or enjoy your life? So that means, for example, if you're 30 years old, times point two equals six. So that means every six days average, we can replenish the amount of fluid, the amount of life we produced, and uh, one ejaculation every six days will be safety. Our bank account will be balanced. No over withdrawal, no over uh, deposit, and so on. Of course, that's just a principle. Doesn't mean you don't allow to have to make love. So in other words, you can make love, but uh, try not to ejaculate. ejaculate. So the uh, orgasm, the love, uh, the sexual partner doesn't mean uh, uh, orgasm or, or um, uh, ejaculation contest. We're supposed to not do that. We should just communicate both. Of course, a lot of technique to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So make the, the life so beautiful and full of love, full of a feeling. It's not only just go like a mechanic routine and go start and, uh, and finish. It's not that kind of uh, way to... You represent. talked earlier about death, and mm -hmm. you said death is the separation of the mind and the body yes. in one sense. Mm -hmm. 
It seems to me that my impression, at mm. least, of Chinese culture and Chinese mm. history is that there is a, a real connection with ancestors who have died, who have gone on, that there is a, a reverence for them and for their relics, and a, a, a contact that people in Chinese society live on long beyond their physical years. Is, can you explain that for me, my, my confusion? If it's a separation of the mind and body, is that just a, a physical separation that the body stays in one place and the mind goes on and it's the mind that you're connecting with? Yeah, another word is the soul. The soul left the body, which means death. So that, that's uh, being well accepted in the Chinese uh, history. Of course, the soul or the spirit, uh, according to the Taoism uh, viewpoint, uh, do bl partially believe reincarnation. And uh, certain, uh, like uh, the, uh, the spirit, spirit or soul is the, the part like energy like a universal energy, it's supposed not to have a form anymore after left the body. Only the, the body has a, a, is a material, so that's why we have a form. But if, in, if the person died in a shock or something, so then that memory is still there. So that's why like a ghost haunt the house and, and so on. If a, a, a s s certain kind of death is a big shock or something, so that energy that doesn't scatter. So another kind of person's um, soul or mind never disappeared, still concentrate like, like a one being. So that's, that means that person well-trained. Like a, uh, when this person alive at the time and uh, deep trained called self-awareness mm -hmm. and they always collect uh, this itself and uh, and uh, never try to 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 separate no separation that's why after the body uh, uh, turned to be dust again but the soul still had a, a meaning there so th that's just a one kind another kind uh, person they never been trained and uh, they never wear like uh, they got 25 cents they go get a drunk and they lie on the uh, uh, on the street side, they never wear themselves. They're just like a dog. So they are dead. They're dead. That's just returned back to the universe. Uh, like That's a, a principle of Taoism that, that right. the, the well-developed individual yeah. is that immortal, and the undeveloped individual. That's right. So the Taoism actually is not only uh, try to uh, make the the uh, the soul uh, perfect. Actually, try not to separate. So do everything to maintain this ba this temple, and uh, fix it. Always fix it. That's why you have uh, the diet and so on, and uh, always make them perfect, and the the, the house never collapse. Physical immortal, in other words. Is death then for the well developed person? It's not a bad thing. That means the lesson's not finished, and uh, then you have to go. I come back again and to get another body and uh, to learn the next step, the, the, uh, the, the lessons. When you're finished, like Jesus Christ, uh, resurrection, afterward the, the body and the soul never separate again. This is Infinity. Remember to keep your mind open and listen to your heart. I'm Charlie Serafin. Thank you for listening.